morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, um, and my name is Asad Rahman. I'm the executive director of War on Want. And uh, uh, no, if you're looking in your program, no, I haven't morphed into Roger McKenzie, the chair of War on Want. Uh, unfortunately, Roger is unwell. And whilst he was planning to drag himself from the sick bed to be here, we have convinced him to, that he should focus on rest and recovery. The struggle is long, as we know, and we can only walk that path if we do so with kindness, with care, with reciprocity, and looking after each other. So I'm going to formally welcome you all here, sisters, brothers, new friends, and old friends. Uh, I, as I said, I have the honor of being the director of War on Wanton, and I want to just start by saying, in my many years of being involved in struggles and helping build movements, working across many various organizations, it is an absolute honor to work at War and Want and to be able to work alongside my colleagues uh, who every day uh, show what a passionate, dedicated, and committed set of people they are. And, and whilst I get to be up here formally opening this, uh, the and still we arise festival it's their work that you see all around you and uh, whilst i'm not going to name them all uh, i just want to recognize that this has been a truly a collective effort and uh, in the best traditions of war and want because we never like to do things uh, easily this hasn't been a standalone event and uh, we're deeply honored and humbled to be able to welcome so many of our partners and allies uh, from across the global south uh, who have been here all week uh, in a retreat, working together to try and weave together what a truly just and equitable transition looks like, one that guarantees everyone the right to be able to live with dignity and in harmony and in balance with the planet and all other living beings. Ideas and visions that were going to be shared uh, with that throughout the day, debated and discussed throughout all of today's programs. I can also see many of War and Want's members and trustees and supporters here. And as a membership organization, I also want to just say a huge thank you to all of you because it's your continued support uh, that allows War and Want to be the organization that it is. And you are the lifeblood of the organization. And I would say, as you expect me to say, that if you're not a member of War and Want, uh, you should be. And hopefully by the end of today, you will be. And of course, a huge thank you to uh, Friends Meeting House and to the Quakers, who have so warmly not only welcomed us to this place, but have been committed to the vision uh, of this festival. And so thank you, Rebecca, Sue, and all of the team. And of course, also to our friends at New Internationalists, who share the same vision as War and Want of a new internationalism. Today promises to be an amazing day. We have lots of different panels and workshops and exhibitions and games and so much, much more. Um, but before we kick off, I want to just quickly run through some housekeeping stuff. So now the little bit boring bits, big show I read. Uh, you'll probably see people walking around with red t-shirts with the word festival written on their back. Uh, they're really easily identifiable. Um, and so if you need anything, they're here to help you, so please reach out to any of, them, any of the festival stewards. If you're looking for a room, lost, or just want uh, any information, they can point you in the right direction. Food, because food is always important. Uh, and lunchtime, the Seed Cafe uh, is going to be open all day, so from till about 4 o'clock. Uh, however, hot food is only going to be served between 1 and 3. So that sort of means please don't all go to lunch at exactly the same time. Uh, do try and stagger that. And hot food is also going to be available in the east and west corridors. Uh, and we have uh, tr tried to make sure we are uh, co we're catering for all dietary requirements. So uh, there is lots of food. And of course, if you can't find food here, there's plenty of other eateries around the, uh, around the area as well. There's lots of stalls. Um, so uh, in addition to all of the panels and sessions, uh, the stalls and exhibitions and workshops uh, in room nine uh, on the second floor. And we all sometimes need a moment of quiet and calm. So there's also a quiet room. And that quiet room is located in the Elizabeth Fry suite, which is also on the second floor. 
Um, you can find all of that information about floor plans and programs uh, in the uh, festival uh, program. If you haven't got one, there's plenty on the stalls outside, so please get one from the registration desk. If in the unfortunate uh, uh, situation that you require first aid, uh, that's being very kindly provided by St. John's Ambulance Volunteers, who are going to be based in the medical room, which is next to the Elizabeth Fry Suite, on, also on the second floor. Uh, but if you have any medical issues, uh, please go to the medical room or uh, please contact one of the stewards and uh, if you're feeling unwell and they'll be able to escort you uh, to that room. So uh, hopefully that won't be required. Security, well, they're very easily identifiable and avail uh, available through the day. They've been provided by friends of the house. Um, so any concerns, please re also reach out to them. They're all dressed in the nice black suits, and I've just realized that I'm also dressed in black as well, so uh, you could also be one of the stewards today. Uh, so please, uh, any issues at all, uh, reach out to uh, one, of our, one of our stewards or the security. Bathrooms, because we all need to know where bathrooms are. There's plenty of bathrooms in this building. They're located on every floor with all gender toilets on the first floor and accessible toilets also available on every floor. And there are some stairs in this building, as people who have been here before, uh, but there are also lifts available, so please uh, use them. Fire exits, we don't expect any test alarms today, so if the alarm bells ring, pretty first thing, don't go towards the fire, go towards the fire exits. Uh, those are that way, and they're clearly marked, uh, and please exit the building. There's also, uh, some folks from uh, different press outlets around uh, the festival today and they've been going to be doing some uh, press interviews and they're also clearly going to be identified. One of the things that Warren wants deeply committed to is also language justice, is recognising that our, our movements and our communities and our people should be able to speak in the language that expresses their realities most easily. So we have interpretation and it's going to be real-time interpretation, uh, but it's going to be via a app. And the sessions in the program uh, where there's going to be interpretation are all clearly identified. It's, you have to download an app via, and it's called Interactio. You'll find all that information in the program as well. Uh, and you need smartphone and headphones, and you download the app, and then uh, and it's available for both. Uh, on Google, for Google Play Store and whatever the Apple one is. Uh, and if you don't have headphones, we have a limited number so you can in those session rooms so that they are, are available. But je check the program to see which of those uh, sessions are required. And I also, at this point, also want to thank uh, Clara and all of the invisible interpreters, because you actually won't see them here, but they are all they're doing in that incredible labor to allow us to be able to connect and communicate and be able to speak together because that of course is one of the basis of our movement being able to connect together now we all know that the horrors of covid uh well according to the government have, have passed and all the restrictions have been lifted but do please keep in mind that uh, some of our attendees are vulnerable and may be vulnerable and may not necessarily be as comfortable in such crowded environments. So please respect each other's uh, and individuals' uh, uh, wishes on social distancing, on mask wearing. Uh, we have on site uh, hand sanitizer and we have some a limited number of, of, of face masks. If you uh, require them, hopefully you have them in yourself, but if you do need them and you want to use them, they are also available. Uh, and now back to the and still we arise. And before I invite our opening guests, I just want to maybe say a few words also about War and Want for those of you who may not know us as well. Um, just over 70 years ago, War and Want was founded by the labor movement amidst the horrors of war uh, with a call that the only war worth fighting was the war against want. And that's how our name came about. Uh, and its slogan then, as now, was that poverty is political and what the world needs is justice, not charity. And Warren wants never been afraid to speak truth to power. 
of recognising that the struggle for justice is the beating heart of this organisation. And throughout 70 years, we've stood with those on the front lines of injustice. We stood with our movements in the anti-colonial struggles, in the anti-imperialist struggles. We had exposed corporate scandals such as Nestle's baby milk, uh, tax dodge dodging by corporate giants. We've w stood with workers in struggle, uh, whether it's uh, on the, in, in Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, garment workers, but it's also historically uh, Gunwick, type right, Gunwick strikers here in the UK to Amazon workers. We've helped lead the anti-globalization movement and we're able to, one of the first to name neoliberalism when others were scared of. We work on the root causes of the rigged global economy and our economic system. Tax, de tax debt and trade injustice that not only have looted the global south to enrich the elites and corporate giants, but those policies of forced privatization, of attacking workers' rights, destroying public services that have left half the world struggling to survive, but also 17 million people in one of the richest countries in the world struggling to make ends meet. Of the politics of the sacrifice zone that have been poisoning the lands, air and water and of the global south, the looting and extraction of resources led by our own city of London and many of the mining and corporate giants that are based here, of the fight for food sovereignty and the right to food. And I have to say, incredibly proud that we were one of the first to answer the call of the South African people in their fight against apartheid and lifted up their call for boycott, divestment and sanctions. Just as today, we stand with also with other peoples fighting against injustice, including uh, the Palestinian people. And we were one of the first organizations, I think the first UK organization, to call out not only a century of ethnic cleansing and settled colonialism, but the system of apartheid uh, and the complicity of the UK, whether it's through its arms sales or its ongoing complicity with genocidal acts. And we're unique in that we are a membership organization because we've always believed that change is only possible through the collective organizing of people, bound together through the bonds of solidarity, sharing a common vision, understanding that this fight is a collective fight and that if we don't fight, we inevitably lose. And so in this moment of incredible doom, when we see so much around us unraveling and the scale of multiple crises, not just of the climate crisis, which we already know is devastating the lives and livelihoods of millions of people and destroying our planet, of collapsing ecosystems, of global inequality widening and deepening, of the elites becoming getting richer and richer, of our systems of injustice, of past and present being reproduced in narratives of the just transition, uh, of, of visions of the just transition. And of course, of the bombs that are falling on the people of Gaza and the rise of right-wing populism and far-right forces who seek to divide people with their politics of walls and fences. In this moment, sometimes, quite rightly, we look at those, at those horrors and we can be filled, filled with a little bit of doom. But this today isn't about doom or despair. It's about celebrating our resistance, our collective fights, that actually together we are charting different pathways of alternatives of that people are struggling, are creating, and that that is something that we have to hold on to and remember and build on because it's only those visions of change. We're remembering that all the transformation that has ever happened in this world has come because of people like us people who came together, who sat together, whether it's a fight for trade union rights, the fight for women's rights, the, the right to protest, these were never given to us, no rights were ever given to us. They were fought for by ordinary people and we claimed them. And that is the tradition, not just looking of the past, but to the future that we need to, to look on. And so, as we stand at this crossroads of humanity, when we, we say that never have we seen so many of our systems that we all rely on unraveling? 
when we come out of a COVID pandemic, which exposed for many the realities that even in the midst of a global pandemic, something that affected all citizens around the world, our government and the governments of the global north prioritized the interests of big pharmaceutical companies to rack up millions, denying people of the global south much needed uh, vaccines. That five and a half million unnecessary deaths took place because the profit came before people. We know that the same reality is now at play in the climate crisis. And while people talk about climate change, we know our governments continue to hand out billions in handouts to the very fossil fuel giants that are pouring oil on, on, on a burning planet. We see the inaction. We see the reality of these crises, no longer envisaged by climate scientists in the future, but in our daily lives. We see the realities of what it means, and I'm looking at Khalid there from Pakistan, of what one devastating flood can do. 33 million people affected, a third of the country impacted. We see it in the realities of what's happening to our peoples in the indigenous movement, and I want to welcome our comrades from the Mapuche Nation who are here in Argentina. But we also see that the rise at this moment of crisis, that it's the far right that are growing everywhere, not just in Europe, in India, in Argentina, in many, many different places. And that requires us to have a different story, to connect our visions to the realities of people's needs, and but also realize that this struggle is not going to, this new future is not going to come about passively. It's only going to come about if we organize, not simply mobilize, but organize together. And that's what today's Arise Festival is all about. Weaving our different stories together, our different realities together, of these different issues, deepening our understandings of what are the pathways, what are the crises, how do we go through them, and so we have brought together an incredible set of speakers, of panelists to share their wisdom, their experience, to be in conversation together, but also to be in conversation with yourselves. But our resistance has always been underpinned by cultures of resistance. So I really want to also uh, uh, recognize that, that this struggle also has to be full of joy as well. Uh, and so, uh, two of our guests who I'm going to introduce in a second will help formally open this uh, event. But before I do, I also want to, uh, 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 to uh, uh, introduce one of our guests who's unable to join us but wanted to send us a, a message. Uh, that is Tatiana uh, Roa. Tatiana is uh, now Colombia's Vice Minister of Environmental Planning. She's a political ecologist and has been the forefront of the struggle for environmental justice for over 30 years. She founded uh, CENSAT, which is uh, Friends of the Earth Columbia, and has been a key figure in the eco-social and intercultural pact of the Global South. She's been an incredible and a long time friend of War and One, and has now transitioned from a role inside the movements to a role in the government, taking the, the struggle, uh, uh, people's struggles into the halls of power. So I think we have a video message from Tatiana. Buenos días a todas y a todos. Eh, un gusto estar aquí compartiendo con ustedes, así sea de manera virtual. En primer lugar, quisiera agradecer a War on One por esta invitación que me han hecho. Hubiera querido estar de manera presencial. Eh, fui invitada ya desde hace varios meses, pero eh, eh, digamos debido a, a las obligaciones en las que Hoy estoy como viceministra de Ordenamiento Ambiental y del Territorio y a la urgencia de situaciones que estamos viviendo en el país en un momento en que arrecia el fenómeno del niño, los incendios y el desabastecimiento de agua me obligó a permanecer en Colombia. Se me ha pedido que converse con ustedes en torno a los desafíos que enfrenta un país como Colombia para garantizar la justicia social y ambiental. En particular, ¿qué significa para el primer gobierno progresista en 200 años de vida republicana? Y los desafíos que representa para una persona como yo, que he estado vinculada por más de 30 años a las luchas ambientales del país y del continente. En primer lugar, este gobierno enfrenta una encrucijada muy grande. 
se propuso transformar la senda del desarrollo que en las últimas tres décadas ha estado enrutada, digamos, hacia un modelo de desarrollo extractivista, en particular a la extracción y exportación de fósiles, hidrocarburos y carbón. Y además un país que tiene más de seis décadas de conflicto armado y de desarrollo de economías ilícitas como el narcotráfico. Algunos datos podrían ayudar a entender de lo que habla. En los últimos años, los ingresos petroleros han representado entre el 10 y el 10 por, y el 20% de los ingresos totales del gobierno nacional. Entre 2023 y 2022 y 2023, el recaudo de regalías fue de aproximadamente 20 billones de pesos, es decir, 5 mil millones de dólares. Además, ha sido la principal fuente de divisas de economía, aportando cerca del 40% de las exportaciones y el 20% de la inversión extranjera directa. Pero por otro lado, Colombia es, un, es el segundo país más biodiverso del mundo. Somos el país con la mayor cantidad de aves, mariposas y orquídeas, el segundo en plantas, anfibios y peces de agua dulce. Tenemos el privilegio de tener la mayor extensión de páramos, pero además es un país con una gran cantidad de eh, áreas de reservas eh, naturales, parques naturales, reservas de pueblos indígenas, reservas eh, de, comunitarias de la sociedad civil. Con este contexto, el gobierno colombiano se propuso convertir a Colombia en, el, en una potencia de la vida, el país de la belleza, como dice nuestro presidente, para lo cual se propuso además una serie de reformas sociales ordenar el territorio alrededor del agua y enfrentar la crisis climática con decisiones drásticas como frenar las nuevas exploraciones de hidrocarburos. Y aquí, en esta perspectiva, hemos apoyado el Tratado de No Proliferación de Combustibles Fósiles. En este sentido, nos enfrentamos a un reto muy grande, donde la riqueza natural de nuestro país choca con la dependencia de los combustibles fósiles. Es decir, nos pone a mirar cómo eh, balanceamos esta situación de dependencia, por una parte, y de ir transformando nuestras economías hacia darle una prioridad eh, en, al, a los temas de, de la biodiversidad, a las economías populares, a las economías para la, para la vida. Entonces nos recuerda esa dualidad de Macondo, donde la belleza y la devastación coexisten en una danza perpetua. En este contexto, el presidente eh, Petro y la vicepresidenta Francia Márquez han delineado una, una de las agendas más ambientales más ambiciosas de un gobierno latinoamericano y yo diría incluso del mundo. Y esto en gran medida es, es, es de lo que más me motivó a ser parte de este gobierno en el viceministerio de Ordenamiento Ambiental del Territorio, que hacen parte del Ministerio de Ambiente y Desarrollo Sostenible. Desde el gobierno estamos convencidos de que nuestra diversidad es el camino para enfrentar la policrisis que se expresa en la conjugación de múltiples crisis y en este sentido lo que estamos pensando es en cómo construir unas economías de la vida que provoquen transformaciones en los territorios para abandonar esas economías ilícitas. Se trata de pensar en economías que contribuyan a fortalecer las propuestas sociales y económicas de las comunidades, es decir, una economía, unas economías de la vida más justas social y ambientalmente. El reto es mucho mayor de cara, como ya dije, a la crisis climática. En el último mes hemos tenido alrededor de 57 mil familias afectadas por el fenómeno del niño, 40 mil hectáreas del territorio han, han resultado afectadas por los incendios, tenemos cientos de municipios con desabastecimiento de agua y cada día son mayores los daños. Cada día, pero lo más paradójico es que también enfrentamos la crisis climática y tenemos que endeudarnos para superar esa crisis eh, climática. Colombia tiene un, un nivel de, de endeudamiento bastante alto. Nos encontramos entonces ante la necesidad imperativa de, ref de reformar el sistema financiero internacional, incluso de enfrentar la arquitectura internacional en las negociaciones y de garantizar que realmente lleguen los beneficios a la gente, a las comunidades directas y de construir estas economías de la vida que pongan en primer lugar el bienestar de nuestro territorio, de nuestras comunidades. 
pero las barreras eh, son grandes, o sea, tenemos también demandas internacionales eh, por intereses mineros eh, que amenazan, digamos, estos esfuerzos. Mientras también hay mercados verdes que favorecen más a los intermediarios en lugar de llegar directamente a las comunidades que cuidan nuestra biodiversidad y que incluso agudizan los conflictos socioambientales que tenemos. Entonces tenemos el reto también de conseguir la paz total en el territorio colombiano, enfrentar el 13% de esta deforestación está ligada directamente a economías ilícitas y por eso hemos concentrado nuestros em eh, esfuerzos en identificar estas geografías prioritarias donde se concentren los impactos más severos de la violencia, el deterioro ambiental y los riesgos climáticos. Hemos configurado los núcleos de desarrollo forestal y de la biodiversidad. Entonces, ¿cómo vamos a construir una Colombia potencia de la vida si continuamos en este camino ¿no? de la eh, autodestrucción? Este gobierno, como ya dije, se adhirió al tratado de no proliferación, siendo el primer país continental en hacerlo. Y en seis meses seremos los anfitriones de la COP16 de biodiversidad, donde buscamos hacer la paz con la naturaleza. Los invito entonces a que nos acompañen en este espacio, a que la, no dejemos que la enfermedad del insomnio, que había sido tan contagiosa en Macondo, invada nuestro país, nuestro mundo, nuestro continente, nuestro planeta, y no nos condenemos a 100 años de soledad, sino una segunda oportunidad sobre la Tierra. Muchas gracias. Colombia. And now I want to introduce, uh, in honor of the title of this festival, of Maya Angelou's great poem, one of our dear friends and comrades, uh, Nemo Bassi, who is, uh, I'm sure many of you know him, uh, his long history of struggle, uh, renowned environmental justice activist, winner of the Right Livelihood Award, the Alternative Nobel Prize, uh, you probably don't know it, also a renowned architect, a poet, and a great comrade to so many of us. Uh, I hear all these people are so talented, I feel like I'm a one-trick pony. But Nemo Bassi uh, is going to read uh, one of his own poems and then uh, Maya Angelou's poem, uh, Nemo. I bring you peace, greetings of peace and solidarity and plenty of gratitude to War on Want for bringing us together today. As Asad said, I'm reading first a poem from my new collection of poetry and the title is, I Come From the Future. Pardon me if I'm impatient with history, I come from the future. Rooted in this soil, I recall the toil and never recoil from the struggles to defend nature. Fixated on the innermost core that built your past, that sincerely is what will last. Pardon me if I'm impatient with history, my tough is to awake memories tenderly built by generosity. I recall the utter perplexity of those who revel and enjoy building complexities. Building logs of life, sapping stories woven by beings totally at variance with nature. But I come from the, from the future, born by memories of love and fires, powered by a knowing that drives desires, strengthened by those unseen wires that codify and connect our culture, fixed on the sacred seed to build the dream future we need. Pardon me if I'm impatient with history. 
I come from the future. Thank you. Now, reading a poem by Maya Angelou is extremely difficult because she was so beautiful. She wrote so beautiful, beautifully, and she had a powerful delivery. But I come from the future, so you pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trot me in the very dirt. But still, like dust, I will rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like the moons and like suns with certainty of tides. Just like hope springing high. Still, I will rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard, cause I laugh, ha, 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 like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your haughtiness. But still, like air, I will rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my ties? Out of the hearts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Living behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gift that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise. I rise. I rise. Thank you. Thank you, Nima. Always bring the power of words of our hearts and our struggle wherever you go. Uh, and so does our next comrade, Rafif Ziada, who's uh, academic, activist, uh, and I also want to say a former colleague at War on Want, uh, who's, amongst all of those other things, also a renowned spoken word artist, Rafif. Thank you, Asad, for the very kind introduction, and thank you to War on Want for bringing us all together. Um, as a Palestinian, I must say the past four months have been horrific, and the only way we have survived is through being in spaces like this with comrades. So thank you all so much for being here. Um, I was telling Asad earlier, I haven't performed for four months. I haven't read a single poem because it's been very, very difficult to try and keep it together in public. But War on Want was my first home when I arrived in this country. It was one of the only organizations that was doing boycott, divestments, and sanctions work publicly. So I cannot refuse it when Assad asks me to perform a poem. Um, I just hope I'm able to hold it. But if I don't hold it together, I know we're in England and crying is not allowed. But you know, <laughs> try, give the person next to you a hug. It's okay to have feelings, we're allowed to. Um, and I'll start with a poem. Uh, by Rifat al-Adir, who was assassinated by Israel in the latest acts of genocide. If I must die, you must live. 
If I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings. If I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings, make it white with a long tail. So a child somewhere in Gaza, so a child somewhere in Gaza, while looking heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad who left in a blaze, awaiting his dad who left in a blaze and bid no farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself, sees the kite, my kite, that you made flying up above and thinks for a moment an angel is there, bringing back love. If I must die, if I must die, let it bring hope. If I must die, let it be a tale. Thank you. Um, and I think it's only appropriate to uh, do my own poem, We Teach Life. Um, so here we go. Today, today my body was a TV massacre. Today, my body was a TV massacre that had to fit into sound bites and word limits. Today, my body was a TV massacre that had to fit into sound bites and word limits, filled enough with statistics to counter measured response. So I perfected my English. I learned all my UN resolutions, but still, still he looked me straight in the eyes and asked me, Ms. Diada, wouldn't it all be fine if you Palestinians would just stop teaching so much hatred to your children? Pause. I look inside of me for strength to be patient. I look inside of me for strength to be patient, but patience is not at the tip of my tongue as the bombs drop over Gaza. Patience has just escaped me. Pause. Remember to smile. Rafif, remember to smile. You're on camera. Remember to smile. Pause. We teach life, sir. We teach life, sir, after they have occupied the last sky. We teach life, sir, after they have built their settlements and their apartheid walls, after the last skies, we teach life, sir. But today, today my body was a tv massacre made to fit into sound bites and word limits and uh, they just want a story, a human story, you see. Um, every journalist tells me they need a human story. They need a, they need a hook. Maybe I can find them a woman who speaks English. Maybe she can be pretty. Maybe she needs medication. Just human stories, just human stories, just human stories. And will you condemn? Will you condemn? Will you condemn? How about you? How about you? Do you have enough bone broken limbs to cover the sun? Hand me over your dead. Hand me over your dead and give me a list of their names, but make sure that it's in 1,200 word limits. And shh, don't mention that word apartheid. Shh, don't talk about that word occupation. We just want human stories, human stories. You see, today my body was a TV massacre made to fit into sound bites and word limits and hook, hook those that are desensitized to terrorist blood. But they felt sorry for the cattle over Gaza. So I give them statistics and UN resolutions and I speak their language. We condemn, we deplore, we very, very much reject and we very, very much deplore and we very, very much condemn and these are not two equal sides occupier and occupied and these are not two equal sides colonizer and colonized and I recount and I recount a hundred dead two hundred dead three thousand dead a hundred hundred thousand dead and I and I recount and I recount and I and I tell our stories and I learn their UN resolutions but today Today, my body was a TV massacre to fit into sound bites and word limits. And I, I wish, I wish I could just wail over their bodies. I wish I could just run barefoot in every refugee camp, hold every child, cover their ears, 
so they wouldn't have to hear the sound of bombing for the rest of their life the way that I do. I wished I could run barefoot in every refugee camp and hold every child, cover their ears so they wouldn't have to hear the sound of bombing for the rest of their life the way that I do. Because let me just tell you, there's no sound bite. No matter how good my English gets, there's no sound bite, no matter how good my English gets. No sound bite, no sound bite, no sound bite, no sound bite will bring them back to life. And no sound bite will fix this. There's no sound bite that will fix this. We teach life, sir. We teach life, sir. We Palestinians wake up every morning to teach the rest of the world life, sir. Thank you, Rafif, and thank you to the Palestinian people as well, because they are teaching us what life is, uh, and they are teaching us in this darkest moment what humanity looks like. They teach us every single day. The doctors who refuse to leave their patients, operating without anaesthetic by torchlight. The paramedics who rush towards the sound of bombs, knowing that they themselves are also targets the first responders who dig with their bare hands through rubble, trying to find that echo of life, wanted to save even one life, knowing that saving one life is like saving all of humanity. To the journalists who document those war crimes, knowing that they're being deliberately targeted and killed. The Palestinian people, like all people in struggle, teach us what life is, and it's an honor and it's, I just want to thank you so much, Rafif, every time I hear that, and the fact that it's been so many years that we hear this poem again and again, again and again and again, is one of the greatest injustices and in our, in our responsibility, particularly in a country like the UK, which continues to arm Israel, even as it commits acts of genocide, which continues to give diplomatic cover to Israel, even as it breaches every single international law, humanitarian law. The President Petro of Colombia said at the COP28, in Palestine, the people of the global south see their past, their present, and their future. And it is up to us to make sure that that is not the future. And it's only by collectively working together and organizing, that we can end our complicity and continue to stand in solidarity and say, yes, one day, like the South African people, Palestine will also be free. So I want to close this uh, uh, opening uh, ceremony by inviting now our friends from the Bouja Renge Circle, which is a London-based collective, is fostering the Afro-Columbian tradition as a conscious artistic practice and way of life. Through drums, chants, and dance, their rituals bring our, the community together in that past, in the present, to recreate creative power, self-expression, and joy. And it's traditionally practiced by communities that have experienced slavery and violence and has become a symbol of resistance and resilience, the very sentiment and anchor of this today's fe festival. So we're really grateful and honored to have Estevan and Valeria today here who will offer us an activation to bring us into this space. Over to you, comrades.
invite you all to close your eyes. As we get together and set the intention of love, of compassion, an intention for clarity, an intention for change. Send our love and our voices, our drums, to all our sisters and brothers that are under oppression, that are suffering. In this moment, we unite for a brighter future and our new steps the field with love. Let's breathe together. Let's breathe together. Whenever you're ready, open your eyes. We're here today to offer Bugerengue, and Dr. Conrad was saying this is an Afro-Colombian tradition. It comes from our African ancestors who were kidnapped and brought into our territory, but they brought with us to the incredible gift of music and be able to transform emotions and feelings into sound and vibration. So we're going to be singing together Bugerengue is a community practice, and it is practiced by all of us together. So we invite you to join in with your claps and with your voices. We're going to be singing in Spanish, but no worries if you don't understand what we're saying. It's not about the words. It's about all of us coming together in a collective chant. It's about the vibrations, about the repetition. So please join us, and if at any point you feel it, feel free to stand up and move your body to the beat of the drums. Las olas de la mar son las olas, son las olas. Las olas de la mar. Oye, la leque son las olas. Las olas de la mar. Oye, la leque son las olas. Las olas de la mar. Este lindo huye. Las olas de la mar. 
de la mar. Ay, pa' mi hermano de Venezuela. Las olas de la mar. Ay, ay, yo que está cantando. Las olas de la mar. Ay, ay, yo que está cantando. Las olas de la mar. Ay, dame tu fortaleza. Las olas de la mar. Ay, dame toda fortaleza. Madre poderosa, quien me lo dijere. Madre poderosa, quien me lo dijere. Ay, que tengo el cabello duro. Sacatri, sacatra. Le leo a la petrona. Sacatri, sacatra. Le leo a la petrona. Sacatri, sacatra. Se rompió, se rompió. 